So let's talk a quick, let, let's, let's turn uh, the intensity up a bit because I feel like there's a bit of debate about these topics. And I, they could be the timeline that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. They could be the legitimacy of artifacts, what an artifact is, does it deserve to be researched? Uh, and there always is. There is always a conflict uh, no matter what the topic mm -hmm. is. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about any of the conflicts or struggles or, or obstacles that you've encountered in sharing the information about this? Well, I mean, and typically with any of us that find this stuff, we know it's been modified, worked. You, you just, I, I can pick a rock up at a site without looking at it and know it's been manipulated or modified. And I take that a step further. I look at it under microscopes and magnifying glass and high resolution photography. So I know it's been worked, but if you present this on a, a, a website about artifacts that aren't portable rock art, you will be attacked because people think artifacts, they think projectile points. They, they think about um, salts, you know, woodworking tools, hammer stones, um, you know, the typical, you know, stereotypical artifact. Archaeology surprisingly has no interest in this stuff, um, which intrigues me in the sense that it's so myopic because you can learn so much. And we talked about this earlier that, you know, from an arrowhead, we can kind of get a sense of when it was made. But with portable rock art, we get a sense of what these people looked like, the headgear they wore, you know, um, the facial features. They did portraits of one another. And it is very, very cool when you see this stuff blowing up because you can see the details of the hats and the things like that. Um, you know, I, I've, my, my first batch of portable rock art, I took it to an archaeologist at Grand Valley State University. And I was so excited. I thought it was going to change the world, man. I was like, oh, fucking, excuse me. I'm, <laughs> I'm retiring. Um, this isn't Joe Rogan. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to retire because I made this amazing discovery. And the guy, the archaeologist, took one look at it and said, it's just a rock. And then he gave me a book on arrowheads. He said, you probably should look at this. Anybody would have the mm. ability to identify a, a projective point or an arrowhead. This stuff is a whole different category. And the minute that embarrassing moment happened, I left there and I said, I'm going to prove, I, the rest of, if it takes the rest of my life, I'm going to prove that this stuff is real, and hence the documentary. So I started you know, formulating a plan. Um, as I got better at this and found cooler stuff, I continued to approach archaeologists and post them on websites, and it was consistent across the board. Nope, it's just a rock, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're doing, these are artifacts, let me teach you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, recently, me and Amy went to the um, Archaeology Day in East, or no, Lansing, Michigan, where they have archaeologists. It's kind of like the antique road show, where you bring in your, your artifacts and they kind of look at them. And my purpose wasn't to go there and say, you think this is an artifact? I went there to say, these are artifacts. You need to recognize this. And the first thing out of the guy's mouth was, what this one, which is very common. He's That's like, a, he's yeah. like, it's just a rock. It played perfectly because that's what I wanted for the documentary, mm -hmm. you know, but everything I pulled out, I mean, I started, I eased into it. I, I brought out some projectile points and I'm like, oh yeah, these are wicked and cool and blah, 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 blah. Started telling me about that. And, okay, so I built that relationship. The minute I pulled out the affordable rock art, oh my God, it got ugly. And I was like, well, okay, this is fired clay, man. Fired clay, it doesn't fire itself. No, that's soapstone, hands it to a geologist. Yeah, you don't know what you're doing. And I said, I said, Doc, a four-year-old a four-year-old kid would recognize it. He goes, What? He got really offended. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, I got great content. Um, we're all dealing with this. So I mean that's my goal, that's my purpose in life right now is to um, you know, show the world that there's another aspect to archaeology, that there's so much more we can learn about indigenous cultures, who these people were. Were they Native American? I don't know. Some of these rocks with the portraits look very Caucasian. They got nose, big nose like, like mine, you know, they look um, Celtic. And there are some theories that, you know, there are other cultures here. So instead of like, 
trying to repress that information, let's delve into this, let's study this, let's figure out the true history of the Americas and the peopling of America and when we got here. Because it used to be Clovis first, you know. Those big projectile points used to kill the mastodons they found one associated with a mastodon. They can date that stuff 13,000 years ago. For the longest time, that was hell-bent archaeology. Humans have only been in North America for 13,000 years. No. Now we're finding out 22,000 years, 30,000 years, it's going to be a matter of time when we find some datable human bones that we're going to say, Maybe Neanderthal was here. Maybe Homo erectus is here. So you're saying the, the standard, the norm was history, archaeology believes um, humans were not here in the United States until 13,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Then they found a discovery. Um, you mentioned a, a mastodon mm -hmm. find that changed that, that worldview, the zeitgeist about well, it. Well, a small population of anthropologists, paleontologists, anthropologists, and archaeologists studied this stuff extensively and they tried to recreate the breaks in the bones and determine the breaks happened 130,000 years ago. The, all the rest of the archeologists, probably in the world, said, like, no, nope. they're fighting, they're adamantly fighting. And you know, they have you know, grants, they have some investments, they have stake in the game too, and their theory, theories are gonna be destroyed, so maybe they're gonna lose their funding. So there's other motivational factors that come into play but we're all banging our heads against the wall, and I've just accepted the fact that I'm not going to change their mind, but I can sway the rest of the public opinion, and then you can go out in your backyard and find this stuff and study this, and, and you'll come to a whole new fascination and appreciation to the first inhabitants of, of North America, whoever they were. We don't know. It's a mystery. I think that's fantastic that you're, that you're solving this. Uh, <laughs> trying. Trying to solve it. Yeah. 